When you're big, you're bad. Sometimes you do some stuff that might be a little inappropriate sometimes, maybe. It's top 10 scandalous crimes that kings committed. Number 10, King Charles I. You can put any king down on this list, really. Uh, people weren't as kind and loving as we are now. Or, or well, less cruel, I guess. <laughs> king Charles was no different from any other. A monarch sniffing his own farts up in his castle, doing his very best to snuff out religious groups that he didn't agree with. A lot of guys were like that. It's brutal, but that's history, folks. Well, one such measure he took, I think, was so wrong, so heinous, and so criminal, and so offensive, that he should have been locked up for life. During the 1600s, this man, in an effort to curb religious views, outlawed Christmas. Yeah, that's right. Outlawed Christmas. That means no gifts, no tree, no Santa Claus, no turkey, no stuffing, no nothing. This was quickly dissolved after he was removed from office. And yes, I know Santa Claus wasn't there then, but st it's still, it's Santa Claus, it's Christmas. Can't have Christmas without Santa Claus. Number nine, William the Conqueror. You've all probably heard the name William the Conqueror. Battle of Hastings, illegitimate son of the king fighting for the throne, very violently too, I might add. However, today I want to talk about his dating skills. Look, dating can be hard. I, I, I get that. There's a lot of anxiety, especially when self-image comes into play. Ooh, I'm too fat. I hate my nose. And what are these legs? Ugh, no one's gonna like me. Everyone thinks like that. And it's always usually right before a date, too. You could be staring in the mirror, and then all of a sudden all your bruises, pimples, and blemishes seem to show up out of nowhere. It's weird how that works. Well, William was different though, he, he was more confident. He didn't have confidence issues like the rest of us. To quote a brilliant chemist, he was the one who knocks. As the story goes, he was quite fond of one lass. She was not fond of him. Classic story, really. So after trying to court her several times and failing, he decided to drag her on the ground by her hair until she said yes. Don't, don't do that, that's, that's bad. Number eight, Kangas Khan. I don't think some folks realize just how brutal this guy really was. I mean, if you've ever played the Ghost of Tsushima game on PlayStation, then you know exactly what the Mongol horde is capable of. Nasty things. The man carved out most of Asia and parts of Europe. In one battle allegedly taking the lives of one million people. And all that remained was a mountain of bones and human fat. Ooh, gross. He's been known on how not to treat a lady and reportedly liked to use his young and newest soldiers as arrow fodder by creating human shields with them. A lot of conscripts in his army were often taken from villages that he conquered. It's kind of how he kept the machine going. So either fight with me or that's picture wrap for you. What a nice guy. What a swell nice guy. Jeez. Number seven, Galizo Maria Saforza. This guy was just bad. Like, like all bad. Not like Deadpool where he does some bad stuff for good reasons, anti-hero kind of guy. This, nah, this guy's just straight bad, straight evil. In one story of the disturbed king, he had a rival's hands chopped off. No more tennis matches. He left prisoners in hanging cages and even had a priest that made a prediction about him that he didn't find all too flattering in prison with little food and water. It got to the point where the man had to eat his own refuse. So if you cross Galeazzo Maria Saforza, um, don't, don't do it. Number six, Ivan the Terrible. I'm not that familiar with Russian history before the year 1900, but there is a lot to unpack. It's not all Lenin and hammers and sickles and such. Ivan the Terrible was the first czar of Russia, and he was quite the specimen. From having struck his daughter-in-law and unlifing his son in a fit of rage, he was one nasty dude. However, I believe the story of him in St. Basil's Cathedral is more noteworthy. As the story goes, Ivan commissioned an architect to build St. Basil's Cathedral. If you've ever seen it, you know how gorgeous it is. All the Onion Palace buildings and whatnot, you know what I'm talking about. Ivan was so impressed with the architect's work that he had his eyes gouged out so that no one could ever build another structure or gaze upon another structure as magnificent as the cathedral. That's hardcore, dude. That's pretty hardcore. So if you do a bad job, he probably would have got rid of you. And if you do a good job, he'll still get rid of you. Number five, Ferdinand the First of Naples. This one is so strange, I I can't even, I, I have to mention, I, I cannot not say it. In a nutshell, Ferdinand looked normal, just your average European king. I mean, what, what could be wrong about this guy, right? He looks pretty normal. Well, the guy was basically Buffalo Bill. 
Ferdinand liked to keep his enemies close, taking after a little bit of Michael Corleone. However, so close that oftentimes dinner guests would mysteriously disappear and end up not breathing. Afterwards, they would be mummified and pickled and dressed as if they were still alive. He would then invite more guests over for dinner to show them what could happen if they crossed him. He would open the doors and show them a sick dinner-esque area play thing of people dressed up and that's 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 what bad people do that's what buffalo bill would do that's gross we don't like that number four henry the eighth are you even surprised he's on this list i mean come on it's henry the eighth but i i support all healthy marriages and i support healthy divorces sometimes things just don't work out but that doesn't mean you have to go all johnny depp on the situation there's better ways to work things out well, in Henry's case, it may not be televised on national TV, or global TV in this case. It was more like Edward Scissorhands, if you will. Henry VIII is famous for dealing with his wives. When the church would not grant him the divorce he so wished for, he removed his wife's head from her body. And then he remarried and divorced another, and then he, uh, well, another one lost her head, and then divorced another, and then finally he passed away and the wife lived on. It makes sense, sure, that's, all I'm saying is the man went a little too far. That's all I'm saying, just a little bit. Number three, John King of England. This is the dude who wrote the Magna Carta, which for legal students everywhere is like planet Krypton. It's where it all starts. The whole Superman, the law, everything. It's the basis of everything. Besides Hammer Robbie's code, of course. Well, it's not like he signed it very enthusiastically, and the man really wasn't the nicest. He's also known for taking 22 of his most noble knights and throwing them away in a dungeon until they starved and didn't wake up for, well, no breakfast. He betrayed his brother, Richard the Lionheart, the very famous Richard the Lionheart, who also wasn't very nice either, and is suspected of being the mastermind behind the delifing of his nephew. Ooh, talk about family scandal. Number two, Napoleon Bonaparte. I know, hear me out though. The story of France and Napoleon is one for the history books. I mean, really, it's, it's so strange. Imagine a country that violently overthrows its king and queen, and then while in the middle of that, which could be described as the worst political strife in history, you then go to war, which, if you know how that, it's, it's not a good idea. You, 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 you're probably gonna lose. Except Napoleon didn't lose. Napoleon took France to war like five times within a, a short time period and won most of them. It's pretty good. Well, good for winning, not good for the people that make it. That's when he declared himself Emperor of France and kind of lost his way, which it's stupid because it defeated the whole purpose and point of the revolution and the democracy that the people were so fighting for. Eventually the international community caught up with him and banned him to an island twice because he came back and said I'm back and then no back to the island go go back you're going you're going back. Number one Elvis Presley look I know I know it's it's Elvis, but he's the king of rock and roll, man. You, you can't go wrong with Elvis. It, plus, it kind of works, too, because I think people have a really good image of him, but he actually wasn't... You'll see. He is the king of rock and roll, to be fair, and he's more famous than any king on this list, actually. But the king of rock and roll isn't so squeaky clean and certainly not a stranger to crime and scandal. At some points in his career, you could find him excessive drinking and using um, illicit substances, if you will. He might have had to put on those jailhouse rocking denims, well, for real. Back in 1956, at the peak of his fame, really, Elvis got into a physical altercation with two gas station attendants after fans began to crowd him, it was a messy situation, and he was actually up on charges of battery and disorderly conduct. Not a good look for the king, baby. The king's got to stay clean. Anyways, guys, that's going to wrap it up for me today. Hopefully, I'll be back in the studio soon. Everything's going to be just be juicy, jay, and sexy and nice. I want to thank everybody for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe here at Bumblebee for more. And if you, too, want to be the king of rock and roll, then check out my social somewhere down below. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye-bye. Look at my eyes. Wow. Look at my eyes. Oh, my God. Gali, oh, it's gonna be hard to say, Galizo, Galizo, Galizo.